Hi, Scott Wyman here, Employee Training Coordinator at Central Texas College. Today I'm going to show you how to take a Word document and turn it into a fillable PDF form. Start by opening Adobe Acrobat Pro. I'm using version 10. We're going to go under Getting Started. We're going to click on Create PDF. Navigate to where your Word document is saved. Mine's right here. I'll just double click. This will take a minute or two uh, while Adobe takes the Word document and converts it into a PDF. You can watch the progress down here in the bottom right. And there's our base form, Word document converted to PDF. Now we're going to go up here to the top right hand side. You'll see the button here It says Tools. Go ahead and click on this button for Tools. It'll open our little toolbox. We want the forms area under the toolbox. Uh, once that's open, we're not going to create a form because we already have a base document created. What we're going to do is edit the existing document. So click the Edit button. Adobe will look at your form and if you want it to, it will analyze your form and try and determine where it thinks you should have a field. Um, it'll look at this line and say, oh, there should probably be a field there, and there uh, should be a field here, and here, and here, and so on. But that's not much of a learning tool. So for this video, I'm going to click No. And before I can create the form and make changes to the existing form, I have to save it. So I'll click the Save button. And I'm just going to modify the default name here so that I know which one I'm using for this demo. Click Save. And there is my base form. I'll zoom in here a little bit so we can see. And now you can see we're in the edit area of Adobe and I know this because up here on the, the toolbars I can now see my different field buttons. Here's the text field button, a checkbox button, radio buttons button, a list box button, uh, list uh, drop down list button. This is the command button button. Here's the digital signature button. And you can also add with this button right here barcodes. That's a different class though. We're going to start by adding uh, just a plain old text field right here on, on top of the, the typed or printed name. Just come up to the toolbars, click one time on the text field button, bring your mouse pointer down into the form and you'll see the default field right there as your mouse pointer. Now you can just point and click to position this this field like this, click, and there's my field. Uh, but I don't want that little bitty field. I want the field to extend all the way over uh, to the end of my line. So what I can do is with this field, I'm going to go ahead and rename it. I'm going to call it typed name and I'll click on all properties and now what I can do is I can actually grab this sizing handle right here and make this field bigger so that it's the same size as my line. Okay, back to our properties. The only thing we're going to do here on the properties for this text box, if you click on the general tab, you'll see there's the name that we gave this field. I'm going to add a tool tip. This is uh, a little a little fly out tool tip when people hover their mouse over this field kind of gives them a little clue as to what they should put in here not that the words underneath it wouldn't already do that but just to be safe click here to enter your typed name and then down here we have some other common properties that we're not going to worry about just yet uh, and one that we will uh, the first one is the visible field um, we're going to leave this field visible, some of the other options, hidden, visible but doesn't print, which we'll take a look at later, and then hidden but printable. Uh, the hidden but printable you might want to use um, if you wanted a date to be printed, but the people filling out the form don't really need to see that field because it's going to be a date identifier. You could make it hidden but printable. For this one we'll just use the visible field. Uh, the other option we're going to take a look at here is we're going to make this a required field. What that means is whoever is filling out this form, they won't be able to save it, email it, 
printed or anything else until all required fields are filled in. A required field that you'll see here in just a few minutes will have a red border around it. We don't have to uh, anything special, just making it a required field will add that red border. Okay, so now we're going to click on the Appearance tab. On the Appearance tab here you can see we can add a border color and a fill color. This, this red hash simply means that there is no border color, no fill color selected. You can adjust the line thickness and the line style since there is no color selected. We can't choose the line thickness or the line style. Down here we have the font size. You can change font sizes, whatever you want. It has an auto uh, size that we'll talk about here in just a few minutes. You can change the text color and you can actually change the text font if that's what you want. We're going to go with just the default colors on that and we'll click the close button. Next we're going to add the digital signature field. Come up to the toolbar, click the digital signature field and there you'll see as soon as I do that the red border around our required typed name field shows up. Uh, for this one we want this field to be uh, again, the same size as our line, but instead of just clicking and dropping that field and then resizing it, we're going to position the field where we would click, but this time we're going to click and drag down to the end of our signature line so that the box is sized right off of the bat. See how that works? Just click and drag down to the right. We're going to rename this field. We'll call it digital signature and we don't really need to go into the to the properties on this one because uh, this is going to be pretty much taken care of by itself so we're just going to click off to the side to deselect that little naming window and now we're going to add the date field which is just going to be a text field so come back up to the text button click and then again we're going to do that click and drag position it and then click and drag down to the right so that they're all about the same size. We're going to call this one. Now this is kind of particular because I don't like to use just the term date for a date field because a lot of applications have date fields already pre-loaded, uh, pre pre-existing um, pre fields. So I just give it a, a little different twist. I'm going to call this current date. That way it doesn't get confused with anything that's already in Adobe. Now this time we're going to click on All Properties. We'll go to the General tab. We'll click here in the Tool Tip and we will say, click here to enter the current date. And we're going to put how, how they should enter it because we're going to set it up as a date field. It has to be in a specific format. So click here to enter the current date in the mm slash dd slash yy format. That way they know that they have to put in month month slash day day slash year year. Uh, we're not going to worry about making a required field or anything of that nature, but we do need to come over to the format tab. Uh, here where it says select format category, we're going to click the drop down button and we want to click on date from that list. And here you'll see there is the month, month, day, day, year, year format that we already specified in our tool tip and it gives you an example of what it looks like down here. Once that's done you can click the close button and here is our somewhat completed form at least for this demonstration. We can take a look at these form fields by clicking the preview button and here you'll see there's the, the red bordered name, there's the digital signature field, and here is the date field. We didn't apply any fill color to these and they're not actually colored. What this is, what you're seeing on this form, is there's an option in Adobe Pro, it's right here, it says highlight existing fields. You can turn that off. So now the only way to really tell that there's a field on your form is by watching your mouse pointer. If the mouse pointer changes to the eye bar, or it changes to the finger, the hand with the finger. That's how you know there's a field or something that you can click on. It's kind of misleading because you can also come up here to the text and get the eye bar and you can highlight and, and click and drag and all that fun stuff. So you really can't tell where a field is and where a field isn't. So that's why I like the highlight existing fields options. All right.
with that said, let's go back. And, well, let's let's go ahead and fill in some information here. I put in our names, and I'll tab down. I'll we'll bypass the signature field because you can't add a digital signature in preview mode. So I'll tab one more time. You say you tab through the different fields, makes it real easy. Um, I will enter the the date in the correct format. Uh, 05 slash 07 slash 13. If you if you enter it wrong, it's going to come up and give you an error saying that your your date doesn't match the you know pre-designed format that was selected. Um, so there you can see how this. I mean, it's really quite simple how it works. Now we're going to go back and we're going to click the edit button because what we want to do now is if somebody goes into one of our forms and they enter information like this and then they just save it and leave. Whoever comes in after them is going to be looking at the exact same information. They'll have to highlight it and delete it and, and retype their information. So what we're going to do is over here in this blank space to the right of this particular form is I'm going to add a button to reset the form fields or clear them out. And it's really simple. You click on the, the, the command button up on the toolbar. It's the one that says OK on it. Bring your mouse pointer down and just somewhere over here on the right I'm going to click to place that button. I'll give my button a name. We'll call this the Reset Form button. We'll click the All Properties link here in the tooltip. Click here to clear all form fields, if I can spell. Click here to clear all form fields. Now, one thing we do want to do with this is we want to be able to see this button while we're on a computer, but if we print this form, we don't want the button to be on the printed form. So we're going to change this form field common properties to visible but doesn't print. Now we're going to go to the options tab, and now we need to put in a label for the button. What you're looking at here on the button where it says reset form, that's not uh, anything that's going to show up when we go in to view the form. This is simply the name that shows up just as it shows up here in the, in the date field down at the bottom. Current date, reset form. This is simply the name that we gave that field. We need to add a label that's going to show up on the button when our users view the form. So we're going to call this reset form. Now we're going to click the actions tab and on the actions tab you'll see here the select the trigger mouse up it has mouse up mouse down mouse enter don't even worry about that mouse up mouse down is, is essentially the same thing one is going to occur when you push on the mouse button the other one's going to occur when you release the mouse button for most of us it's a matter of what half a second maybe um, so we're just going to come down to where it says select action and we're going to click the drop down menu and one of the options from this list if you scroll down towards the bottom you'll see it says reset a form. Go ahead and click that option and then click the add button because we have to add that action down here into our actions window. So click add. It shows you all the form fields that you currently have on your form. Uh, if a form field is selected then that field will be reset when you click this button. If there's a field you do not want reset then you can deselect it here we want all of our fields to be reset so we're going to make sure that all three have the checkbox selected and then we're going to click OK. Now you can see it down here in our actions window and we can close the properties window. Now one more time we're going to go back and click on the preview button and oops look you see how my, see how my text is bigger than my button I need to go back into edit. I'm going to right click on that button. You can right click on any of these fields, any item that you add, and then select properties. And what I need to do for this one is go to the appearance tab and I'm going to change the font size from size 12 to auto. That way it will automatically resize the font so that it all fits its maximum size within the constraints of the object or the item that it's contained in. So now if I go to preview, now you can see it. it's all right there inside the button. So we're going to test the button. Um, when we click the reset form button, it should delete my name and it should delete the date. So click and everything goes away, just the way it's supposed to. Okay.
Let's go back to Edit. As I said earlier, you cannot add a digital signature. Naturally, you can't add one when you're here in, in Edit Mode. You can't add a digital signature when you're in preview mode. So what you need to do before you can actually test the digital signature block is over here under Tasks, we need to click the Close Form Editing button. And that'll take us back to uh, the actual form itself. We're no longer in edit mode. And you can see here's the name that we filled out. There's the date that we filled out. And now when we click this Digital Signature box, the field, if you already have a digital signature in your computer, you can click the, the Sign Document button up here on the top. It'll open the, sig the Sign Document dialog box. Uh, and here's my digital signature that I already had set up on my computer. And you simply click uh, the Sign button. But you might want to consider if it's an important document and you don't want anybody to make changes to it when you're done, there's an option right here that says Lock Document After Signing. You lock the document, you sign the document, you save the document, and then nobody can change it. We're not going to worry about that for this demo. We're just going to click Sign. Um, it's going to ask me to save the form again. So I'm going to save the form this time because this is with my signature. So demo. Now I had signature. Click on Save. And there's my digital signature. There's a lot more that you can do with adding form fields. Um, I'll try and, try and throw out some more short tutorials like this one on some of the other items, checkboxes, uh, the radio buttons, uh, maybe even the barcode. Um, but for right now, uh, this pretty much concludes this demonstration. The last thing we'll do is we'll test it, the reset form button one more time, and there again you can see everything disappears. So if you have any questions, give me a call. Uh, my number is 1381. Uh, shoot me an email. You can find me on the global address list. Take care. Have a great day.